So I just took the OSCP exam. I actually just finished a few hours ago, and I'm sure everyone is eager to know da, 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 how'd it go. I failed. I actually failed, yeah. I didn't pass it on this attempt yet. I mean, to be honest with you guys, I didn't put in enough time. Uh, part of it is due to the fact that I do actually have, full disclaimer to you guys, I do have Learn Unlimited uh, through my employer. So with all the stuff that I had going on, creating the YouTube channel, um, running Elevate Cyber and all that, let's just say that I did not put nearly enough time into the labs. And just based on the data, right, you can check out the the OSCP video that I made a while back where I was looking through some of the charts that offensive security put out. And one very interesting metric, since they have the data, right, is they can see based on how many boxes someone has rooted in the labs and what is their pass rate. So for me, I have rooted 31 machines in the lab. And according to their data, that puts me at about a 47% chance of passing. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I came pretty close. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I came pretty close to passing. Um, if I would have got one more step, I was really far in the AD. Unfortunately for the Active Directory stuff, it is either you get the 40 points for it or you get zero points, right? We've covered that before. A lot of you guys probably know that, but in case you didn't. So for the Active Directory, I was like one step away from getting domain admin. I made it so far into it. It's kind of crazy to me that they actually score it that way because you would think that, okay, it's either pass or fail on the active directory. There's probably not too many steps involved. No, there's actually, you know, in my experience, I don't want to give away too much about the exam, obviously, but let's just say I made it past several steps and I've exploited a lot of stuff and I was super close um, to getting domain admin. I know I was, but I could not find that last little vector. Now, I think that there is a bit of randomness from what I've seen, people talking on Reddit and stuff like that, in terms of the difficulties of the boxes you get on the exam, because there, I have heard from people that have taken it multiple times, some people reporting that on their past attempt, like the on the attempt they passed on, they actually got boxes that were exactly like the PDF, uh, as far as, you know, some of the stuff they teach in the exercises, and they basically just followed that and rooted uh, the Active Directory set. So there can be a little bit of variability at play. But look, if, you, if you're if you really in this and you're committed to this, you're going to take luck out of the game because you're just going to keep coming back. And that is why you might wonder why I sound so optimistic about things, even though I failed. I mean, part of it, it is nice knowing that I have um, the Learn Unlimited, so I don't really have to sweat it. I'm just going to keep retrying this until I pass it. And to be honest with you guys, even if I didn't have Learn Unlimited... This is something that I'm just doing mostly because I want to. Like, I don't need it. I, I'm a senior pen tester and working for, like, the best job that I've had. I love I love the company that I work at. It's amazing. I get to do what I love, doing red teaming, doing web app pen testing, network assessments, all kinds of stuff, things that I absolutely love to do. And honestly, if I didn't have to work another day in my life, I would still do this stuff because that is how much that I, I truly love it. And I'm still on this journey with you guys. And we're going to figure this out. We're going to get through it. I can tell you, I've got a lot of good feedback from taking this exam. And that's one thing that I will say, if you're afraid to take the exam, because you've heard all the scary stories and how difficult it is, and all that stuff, don't be go and take it. Because what's going to happen is, even if you fail, it's going to give you so much feedback on every, with every failed attempt, it's going to give you more and more data. And that's going to help you on the next try. So for example, I, I made it further on this attempt that I ever had before. This was the closest I've ever been to passing. And, you know, maybe your results may vary. Maybe you won't always do better on each subsequent try. I've heard of people that got like 40 points on their first attempt and zero on their second attempt. So that could happen too. But you know, there's variability at play, right? But what I think is really important that people don't talk about is so many people view everything on a, like a binary, either I passed it or I failed it. Because yeah, I mean, it is true. You either get the certification or you don't get the certification on that attempt, right? But here's the thing. In reality, that's not what's happening. You know, in reality, what is actually happening is that on each attempt, you know, over the course of preparing for it, actually taking the exam itself, you're learning stuff. You're learning, you're leveling up. And so you're getting better. So while you might not pass the 
exam on a particular attempt, you're going to leave every exam learning something new and leveling up and gaining more experience and even getting more acclimated to the stressful 24 hour proctored environment, right? Because that can be really difficult for certain people, depending on, you know, your, your personality and stuff like that might be something that is nerve wracking to you. I think there's a little nerves involved for everyone, at least in the very start, but the more you get exposed to that, the, uh, the easier it becomes. I noticed that I wasn't as stressed out about the fact that it was being proctored or anything on this attempt as I was in like, say my first attempt, but all that experience is extremely, extremely valuable. And and look, here's here's the thing as well that understand this: the OSCP just because you failed the OSCP doesn't really say anything about you as a pen tester, as a hacker, or anything like that. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, the OSCP is pretty unique. It, it is unique. I've known a lot of people in the industry, really solid pen testers, senior penetration testers. Some of them running red team engagements and stuff like that. Really, really solid. Uh, hackers that have taken up to five tries. You know, I'm sure there's probably some out there have taken even more times than that in order to pass this thing. And on the flip side, I've known some people that were completely new to pen testing and they passed it on their first try, second try, what have you, right? So uh, there's really, you know, it's really a very specific thing they're testing here. That's what you got to understand is that, you know, it, it is quite a bit different than CTFs. I know that's why one change that I've made on this channel in the past, I would recommend a lot like, oh, do hack the box and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying hack the box is bad for preparing for OSCP, but there's a lot better options now. So CTFs and stuff like that don't, in my opinion, very adequately prepare you for this. And I think it, it I speak to that as well because I've done, I mean, I think I've done about 60 machines or so on hack the box probably close to 70 now. And, you know, I, I didn't pass on this attempt because those machines are a lot different. If you think about it on a hack the box machine, typically there's not too much needed in the way of enumeration. I mean, some boxes maybe, but in general, usually it's not as much about the enumeration. It's usually pretty clear as far as what you're supposed to attack, but the how that is the difficult part. There might be something very specific in that challenge. It's trying to teach you and you got to go deep into that. That's usually how CTFs go. You go deep into a specific thing. It's usually known to you or really easy to figure out, right? Now, the Offensive Security Certified Professional, OSCP, that is much different. Um, they're not testing you on exploitation. They're not teaching, they're not, um, they're not testing you on what the CTFs would be. What they're testing you on is they're testing you on your enumeration, your ability to enumerate, right? Your ability to go up against, you know, have a ton of potential entry points to exploitation, right? You have so many different things you have to enumerate, so many services, so many servers, and you have a limited time constraint, 24 hours. This can really help you on real world assessments. It depends on what kind of assessments you're doing. The ones that are large in scope, like uh, sometimes I have to do network assessments, uh, network pen tests, and I'll have like an entire subnet and I'll have a very limited time to test that. That is where this type of, you know, learning this and establishing that solid methodology, that's when it really comes into play. And uh, Active Directory, like red teaming, it can, it can definitely help there as well. But if you're testing stuff that are smaller in scope, like say one web application or something like that, of course, a methodology can still help you, but it's not as vital as it is in OSCP or in those scenarios where you're having to test a ton of stuff in a short period of time. So what I'm trying to say is this is very helpful for your career as well if you're already in the field and it's a great challenge. I mean, that's why I love challenges in general. That's why I keep going back at this. I will get this, mark my words, I will get this and uh, and I'll share, I'll share with you everything I can along the way. You know, that is why I originally created this channel, right? Let's level up together and, and let's get this thing. Let's Let's take it out. Uh, let's take down this beast. But I can tell you, I walked away absolutely understanding what I what it is I need to work on. So the methodology is what I personally need to dive into a bit more. And uh, because here's the reality, when you're working on, when you're pen testing for like 12 hours, you're 12 hours into pen testing, something crazy like that, right? Your brain's pretty fried and it's very easy to overlook really things that would be very obvious 
if you weren't just, you know, going at it because you have to, because you're on that time constraint, you know, that is where having a methodology, especially can be very helpful just to make sure that even in all the chaos and in all the, you know, fried brain stuff going on, you still can fall back at least. If nothing else, you at least have some solid things to fall back on to make sure that you're you're covering all your bases, right? I haven't really taken the time to write out a methodology, my own personal methodology, and really make it my own and to say like, hey, at a bare minimum, I'm going to make sure I cover all of these areas. And so just having that, I noticed that's what my team does as well. Um, my, you know, my nine to five job, my my team of really like they're most, most of these guys are even more senior than me. Like, you know, in most places that I worked, I was like one of the more advanced people on the team, but I will wholeheartedly say on this team, I am one of the least experienced people. And even these guys, right. They have a methodology kind of document that they go through, not necessarily as a checklist, but just to make sure they can fall back on this methodology and make sure they cover everything for a thorough pen test, right? So just taking that same approach and applying it to OSCP. And to be fair, the folks at Offensive Security, they do recommend this um, pretty openly. And when I first read through their walkthroughs and saw just how methodical it was and compared it to what I was doing, which was very loose, um, not really, not tight like that, not tight and methodical like that, I know that I have room for improvement. So I want to make a methodology for everything, right? I want to make a methodology for web apps, for Windows Privesque, Linux Privesque, and any of the common ports that I might encounter, Active Directory, all of that, and just build that out. So that, I think, is going to help me a ton. And also, yeah, getting better at Windows Privesque is also going to help me as well. It's not something I've spent as much time on, admittedly. I'm pretty solid on the Active Directory um, privilege escalation, but specifically like local Windows Privesk, I know that I would definitely benefit from spending more time in that area. But mostly just putting more time into the lab is like I said, I did not put, I would say in the last two months, if I had to accurately estimate how much time I put in per day on the labs, I would say it had to be about 30 minutes. And there were some days I didn't do the labs at all. So it's probably 30 minutes a day. So yeah, definitely not a not enough time. If you look at all the people that have passed this sucker, right? They all are say a similar thing, right? Like they grinded hard. They just grinded, grinded, grinded hard and got the certification. And it is that type of thing that you have to do because it is very unique, like I said. And here's the thing, you know, even if you do have Learn One or Learn Unlimited, right? If you're putting like 30 minutes a day or an hour a day into it, I mean, yeah, you will eventually pass probably, but it's going to take you like 10 tries. So the better approach, and I know that now, right? I'm set, I'm telling you guys this with foresight, right? The better strategy, even if you have Learn One or Learn Unlimited, is get it, but still go hard and still grind it out in that short-term period if that's something that is possible for you to do within your life. And if it's not, maybe you can adjust some things for the time being, put some things on hold, put some things on, on maintenance while you really just power through this hard, because it's not only about frequency in the past. This is the biggest mistake that I've made. Consistency is important. You know, it really is important to be consistent, but what is also important is that you put in a high amount of volume, right? Imagine if you were trying to get in shape and you went to the gym like three to four times a week, you know, pretty, you know, very consistently throughout, you know, several months, you were absolutely dialed in on that. But when you went to the gym, you only did like one exercise and then you left, you know, you, you wouldn't really be transforming your physique in that way, right? Because you're not doing enough volume. Yeah, you're consistent, but you're not doing enough volume. So that is the biggest change. I'm going to make sure that I uh, make time to both show up consistently and at as high a volume as I can possibly do. Of course, I'm still going to be creating the content for you guys. Don't worry about that. I'm not going away on that, but I'm going to find a way to put in the volume and I'm going to find a way to get the certification. Mark my words once again. And if you are along with me for the journey, if you have similar drive, similar passion, let me know down in the comment section below. I want to hear all about your journey. Maybe you already aced this and you moved on. Let me know as well. Let's, let's hear your story. I think we can all benefit from each other 
off of that. And once you do get this thing, if you're not in the field already, you're you're definitely going to be about at the point where you're going to start looking to get employed into this field. So if that is the case, then go ahead and check out my top 10 interview questions that you need to know to ace that exam now that you've aced the OSCP certification. Even if you don't have it yet, I think I'm proof enough that you don't necessarily have to have this to get into the field, but it will definitely it will definitely help get your foot in the door. So check that out down in the description below. And if you want to get into more technical content, got that for you on the screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.